Good afternoon. It's close enough to go time to get started, I think. Hi, delighted to see so many of y'all here. Uh, do come up the front. I'm expecting heckling and shouting, and that'll be more effective if you are closer. My name's Anthony. I work for Irish web development shop Anertech, and I head up the support team. So I care quite deeply about performance because such slow sites make my clients sad and it's my job to keep our clients happy. It's my job to keep them happy after Anartech delivers a site, but it's also my job to make new clients happy when we in inherit sites that other people have built. So one might say that I'm a combination of a cleaner, and a rubbish man, and a dream maker. So what you're about to see is, well, I've basically taken a vanilla install, added a few modules, and broken a website so that it's really awful. And all of the evil that I've committed, like a James Bond villain with the white cat and the shark tank, it's all been inspired by real life examples of stuff that I've seen on production sites, and some of it is mind bogglingly stupid. But I've contrived some examples to show the sort of thing that we've had to fix over the last few years. And we've fixed them and ripped them out and cried into our beer over them. So, Many production sites were harmed in the making of this talk, but you'll see none of them today. It's all the fake site. We're talking about performance in terms of how to build websites, and it's the stuff that anybody can use on any hosting platform. We're not talking about server-side magic like Nginx and Varnish and Memcache and all that sort of server voodoo. We're looking at the basics from the browser to the server and communication and all the stuff that really matters. The stuff that you can't fix very well by putting varnish in front of it. So this is where it gets hairy. We'll do some live demo. And this is where I'm expecting shouting and heckling. So I'll be asking questions. I'll be looking for suggestions. Shout. I will repeat the suggestions, and we'll see if we can fix this site. So here is a site I prepared earlier. Now, imagine you're in my shoes, and you get the call from a client. Our website is down, say 503 error, or 502, maybe the database server isn't available. And they're going, oh, our site is broken, our site is broken. So you go and you look at the server logs and you find a couple of URLs that coincide with a site outage. And maybe this is one. So you load it up and you wait and you wait and you wait. And then, sure enough, something falls over. This won't fall over, but it will take over a minute to load. So what's your first port of call? If you were in my shoes, what's the very first thing you might? Which? Slow queries. OK. Any advances on slow queries? What's the first page on the Drupal admin screen you might go to? Reports. Yeah. Anything else? Go on again. OK. Well, let's have, a look. let's have a look at the logs, shall we? So we've got reports, and we've got recent log messages. Let's have a look. So I cleared the logs before this talk. Oh, my goodness. You will note that the logs are dark and full of errors. So that's not a good thing, right? So we know we've got problems. Where else could we look to get information? 
Where could we look for clues? Um, definitely slow queries we can look at. Um, there's a cool tool, while you all have a think about where we might look, there's a cool tool that I will turn on now called Web Profiler. I will turn on now if the extend button works. Um, I'm at, yeah, right, so here's Web Profiler. And this is part of Devel, and it's new in Drupal 8, because I think it comes from Symfony. I wish I had this in Drupal 7, but uh, it is wolf wonderful, and I'll show you why. So, uh, Web Profiler, in concert with, say, actually, let me stop this. The built-in browser tools, like Web Inspector and Chrome, is a godsend, and specifically, the network tab. So if I reload, we can see everything that is being downloaded as it's being downloaded. We can see how long you have to wait for every, here, check it out. See this? This is the HTML, and it took, oh my goodness, this is crashing my browser. <laughs> It takes about, uh, oh, where's it gone? It takes 12 seconds for the HTML. That just ain't cool. Now, whilst that's loading, here's Web Profiler. It gives you this cool toolbar. It shows you how much RAM is being used just for this request. And you might not care, but think of this, an average Amazon virtual machine has 256 meg of RAM for PHP out of the box, right? I think it does anyway. If this request takes nearly 100 meg of RAM and you get three requests, the server's going to start complaining and people are not going to get their responses. So that's something we need to look at. Then we've got, ooh, we've got database queries. This big red error here is showing two and a half thousand database queries. So we gotta do something about that too, right? So, what can we do? Uh, I guess we should, I don't know, maybe we'll look at the performance page, see what we can do there. Uh, let's stop this one actually, cause it's slowing everything down. Okay, you just stop. And we'll look at performance. We'll see what we can do. So, configuration. And performance. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so we can aggregate some CSS and we can aggregate some JavaScript. That's okay, right? Why does that matter? Any ideas? Hmm? Fewer, fewer exactly, fewer round trips. Each HTTP request involves a round trip to the server and overhead to the server and time. So we want to minimize that, right? So I happen to know that we had, ooh, I don't know, 2,000 requests in, on that view. So aggregating our CSS and our JavaScript, that's going to help, right? Um, but what I've come across a lot is people listing stuff they don't need to list or listing stuff, say, hey, give me all of our events ever, and you maybe have 500 nodes. So that's pretty dumb. So let's have a look at the view, because this is nicely named broken view is a clue. Uh, what are you, your performance? Here's our view. Here's our view. So what can we see that is wrong with this view? Any suggestions? Yep. Okay. Displaying all the items. Well, that's an easy thing to help. Put less rubbish on our page. So we can display a set number of items. Say, I don't know, 25? It's probably better. Uh, 
and we can give it a pager. Yeah, that, that's probably fine. What else can we do? Because in the interests of time, because you know this is a short show and tell, right? Um, in the interest of that, we'll do everything we can here on the view before we run the page again. Things that will slow down your view are needless sorting. Now, respect to Jochen and Freistelbox for this. He was explaining how an unnecessary sort on a big enough result set will crash a database server. And by default, views will give you a sort. So don't put it on unless you need it. Oftentimes, we're only using views to pull out data, and then we're processing it and sorting afterwards. So don't do it if you don't need it. So let's get rid of a few of those. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. Sort it. Let's get rid of that. Be extreme. Another thing that's worth checking for is in query settings, distinct will slow things down. When I started writing SQL first, back in the dark ages, I loved distinct. So that might all help. Um, but what else? What else is this actually showing? I wonder. We've got what? Whole nodes. We've got, ooh, all of this share messing. We've got images. We've got comments. We can show less. We can show less. Because our, did anybody notice how big the HTML was? I expect that it is massive. Oh, no, it's gone. Oh, well, doesn't matter. We'll, show, we'll, we'll fix our view, and we will run it again. So let's show, hey, let's show fields. They're more lightweight than a full node. Let's make sure our image isn't showing the original image, because why would you want a derived image? Why would you want to use an image style? Make it smaller but also make it physically smaller, as in like pixel dimensions, but also Drupal will uh, compress it. It'll only do JPEGs, I think, but if you use something like resmush it and get it to compress your derived images, then that's a win. So it's all about reducing the amount of data that has to come down the wire. So let's give it a large image. So we're reducing our size of our images. We're reducing the, uh, the weight of all of those assets. Save that, and we'll see what difference this makes. So if we recall, this took a minute to load. It had 2,000 requests, and it was about 20 megs in weight. So let's go. Still not great. It's doing something stupid in the background. So our HTML is still taking six odd seconds <clears throat> to be generated. Come on. There we go. So we've got 67 requests, hell of a lot better than 2,500. Uh, 700K transferred. So that's good. That's down from 20 meg. We're finished in nine seconds. That's good. OK. Why else would it, um, why is it taking 691 queries? There's a question. Next place to look, I guess, is gonna be custom code. There's always some. Somebody's always done something stupid. Happily, I have a module full of stupid. So, um, here's something that I saw in real life that made me cry. They're loading up menus. Any, any node that was in a menu loaded the menu, traversed the menu, and loaded all the nodes in the menu. I can't remember why, but it was mind-blowingly dumb. So we're, we're doing an awful lot of node load here that we don't need to do. So let's stop. Let's just kill that dead. Because that ain't good, right? 
Okay, we'll try that. And we'll do it again. See what difference it makes. Oh, that's better. That's given us a third of our DB queries. Uh, another stupid thing that you see around the place is leaving log messages in that you don't need. Every one of these log messages is a write to the database. And if you're just serving something, like you're making a request and you're getting a page back, you don't need to be writing to the database. And writes are expensive, so let's kill them. Uh, oh my goodness, what if you've got undefined variables? That's a write to the database. We should kill that. And why are we loading nodes? Oh, we're iterating over our result set. Maybe we're gonna, um, maybe we're gonna process it somehow. Chances are the data's already in views, in the view that you've just gotten the results from. So needless node, load nodes are great, great evil. And more useless logging. So we'll kill that, and we'll kill that. And we'll kill some more undefined variables. And we'll have a look and see what we can find. We are now down to 68 requests. We're finished in three seconds. Can we get faster? What's fast enough? Three seconds is too slow. Because think of this. You're in a conference center with, you know, world-class Wi-Fi, and it's fast. What if you're in a field on your phone in a 3G area? Oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's only six seconds. What if you've got a bad connection on slow 3G on your phone? It's a lot slower. It's still coming down the wire. It's all about the payload. Because Drupal's done its job, it's served all of the stuff. But it takes ages for your payload to get down the wire. 10 seconds. So, let's have a look at what else can we do? I wonder, is this being cached? Because caching, like, your browser will cache stuff as much as it likes. It'll cache images, it'll cache uh, static assets like CSS and JavaScript. Um, your Drupal install will cache pages. Unless it isn't doing, and you can check here in the headers, you can see, oh my goodness, something's making Drupal never, ever, ever cache this page. So even though we could go to views, um, and we could tell views, hey, let's, uh, oh, sorry, it's not in query settings. We can tell views, and this is not a bad practice. We can tell views, cache this, please. You can do it like every so often, refresh the view, or whenever there's new content or stuff like that, refresh, refresh the view. So we can get views to cache, but we can also make Drupal cache. Now, Drupal is not caching. Any ideas why? There's two obvious modules that are common culprits for this that'll stop a page cache. Any suggestions? And it was the same in Drupal 7. Blocks? Blocks? Don't think so. I suppose it depends on the block. Well, Honeypot. Honeypot will catch you out a lot. Don't think Devel will. Necessarily. Uh, but Honeypot does. If you have Honeypot protection, the time-based protection from Honeypot on any form, and you say have, oh, I don't know, a login block on every page, and it's protected by Honeypot, then no caching, sayonara. So let's kill Honeypot. Um, and there is also another module that is useful but dangerous that'll set HTTP headers. And that can be useful, except when you set 
don't cache headers. Here we go, HTTP response headers. Use this with caution because if you tell it don't, if you like say don't ever cache, it won't cache. If you say um, set the, the time for caching, the expiry time to zero, it'll never cache anything. So that sucks. Um, but it looks like I haven't turned it on, so that's okay. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Let's kill that. So, when that finishes saving and Honeypot is gone, we should start to get more results. We're already down to only 137 queries. And let's run a second time, because doubtless it was clearing caches. There we go, 102 queries. Now, see this? Time to first byte, 800 milliseconds. So content is hitting the browser in under a second. And you can see down the bottom here, the DOM is loaded in one and a half seconds. And the whole kit and caboodle is loaded in two and a half seconds. Down from a minute, so not too bad. If we wanted to further improve it, we could look at what is going on here. There's something crazy going on here where we could trim all of this ridiculous HTML. There's no need for an entire body. Um, I'm also conscious that we've only got three minutes. So, the things we could do to further make it better is compress our images more, compress our CSS more, get advanced aggregation going on, compress all of the CSS, the JavaScript, minify it, um, trim the body text, maybe use smaller images, and it'll all add up to more payload savings, fewer requests, faster site, happier punters. And with that, uh, I will just go through the principles over the next minute or two, principles that I've just talked about. So, put less rubbish on your page. You don't need to show all of your events all the time. Minify your assets, compress your images. You want the file size, the total page load, down, small, small, small. Remember the farmer in the field with the crappy 3G connection. Every HTTP request is a, an overhead. You want to aggregate your assets. You want to make as, many, as few requests as possible. Uh, get views to do the hard work once and save what it's doing. Get the browser to uh, cache your assets. Caching for the win. And then, of course, get a proper hosting environment and use Varnish and Nginx and that. Get to know Web Profiler. Get to know Web Inspector and the Network tab in Web Inspector, because it is a godsend. Don't forget about the farmer. And this is nearly the most important. In any build, any interaction with a client, any interaction with you know, back-end team or, God forbid, the front-end team. Champion performance. Tell them no. They don't need that extra image. Show less. Put less rubbish on the page. And users will thank you for it, as I thank you now. So we got like a minute. Um, so if anyone has a question, rock up to the mic and shout. Otherwise, y'all have a nice day. Okay. Well, oh, do we have one? Do we have one? We do. You switched from uh, full content to fields. Yes. Is it faster if you switch to, let's say, a teaser? A teaser mode? I suspect fields are a bit faster, but I, I haven't done scientific tests. 
Um, really, I just knew that I had three fields ready to go, so it was convenient. I could have, I, teaser was the other option, but uh, there's, I guess there's more setup because you have to go into the teaser in the content type and mess there as well, whereas I could just do everything in the views UI by using fields, you know? So I don't, didn't have a good reason for using fields, but. Okay, thanks a million for listening, you guys. I hope you learned something useful. Oh yeah, and go to the sprints tomorrow and evaluate the session. Thanks. Right, there we go. Yeah, it's terrible. It was just 20 minutes. Yeah. Crazy. Thanks. Well, we do uh, instead of like scrum or something yeah. in the morning or